amazing grace how sweet the sound that saved a wretch a wretch like me i was lost but lord you found me i was blind 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 but now i can see it's amazing how you love me. Amazing. It's amazing how you love me. How you die on it's the cross for me. You love me. It wasn't easy, how but you still did. You love me. It's amazing it's how. Amazing See you where are you me. taking me? It's amazing how it's so amazing. You love me. Hey. You deserve the glory and the honor. Lord, we lift our hands to worship as we praise your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor, Lord, we will in our hands and worship as we bless your holy name. You deserve, you deserve the glory and the honor, and the honor. Father, we love you, say, Lord. You do my 
and we trust that indeed you are learning we trust that you are benefiting we'd like to get responses from you we'd like to really get response from you as to what level our ministry is making impact on your life it's important we do that uh if you don't do it we'll still continue to do what we do but we just want to encourage let you know that indeed it is a very good thing to to know what's happening and to be able to give us a feedback as to what way, what way our ministry has been a blessing to your life. And if you are benefiting, it is now a very good thing that you'll be benefiting and don't acknowledge that you are benefiting from it. So we want to, we want to know and we, it is now, it will authenticate us, whether you do or not, we are authenticated, we know who we are, we know what the Lord has given us and what we have the ability to, you know, to, 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 to manifest, but we still have a responsibility to do a follow up to see why, how we are making impact on God's people. We want to thank God for all you can do to follow our series. We, we still own the benefit of spiritual growth. Um, and um, uh, uh, beginning uh, tomorrow, we are introducing a new topic for our, our time of refreshing. We'll be talking about rescuing the generation. You know, uh, and so that will be our focus in uh, the time of refreshing. For the morning dew, every morning, we are discussing right now the blessings and the, the benefit and blessings of uh, being spiritual of being spiritual and here we're talking about the benefit of spiritual growth so our our message is somehow you know related and we move in a direction oh well, blessed god we we tonight will be probably our last night we may be closing tonight if we are able to cover all we're supposed to cover we would like to give you an overview we we talk about the benefit of spiritual growth we said that growth is necessary um, the purpose of God is tied to change and transformation. If God's purpose for your life is going to be fulfilled, change is something that, is, that should be that should be a part of your life. Uh, transformation should be part of your life. That will help in the process of bringing the purposes of God to pass. We say that uh, many of the things you are supposed to be experienced as a child of God and be blessed by and, and, and partake of are things automatically that are yours as a believer and they should be happening for you as a believer. But what will make it happen is when you develop your capacity, when you build your capacity. Many a times people are more interested in having things instead of preparing themselves to maintain things. The reason why growth is necessary is that growth puts you in a position to maintain what is being made available to you. Too many people today are, are able to obtain things but are not able to maintain things. The maintenance of a thing requires Maturity requires your ability to understand that thing, to know how it operates, how it works. If you don't understand it and don't know how it works, there's no way you can maintain it. And that's why even your spiritual life, no matter how much God has graced you and God has blessed you to be a wonderful believer that will make an impact and bring the change with desire, as a child of God, it's very, very much important that you grow and you develop and build your capacity so that you can ably represent the kingdom. Hallelujah. Praise the name of Jesus Christ. We say if growth is going to be realized in your life and those things that you look forward to, to achieving as a child of God will be possible. We talk about it being passionate, about growth, being passionate, about intimacy, the intimacy in a relationship with God, being passionate about knowledge, uh, being a, a, a passionate about stewardship, and also making a commitment to adjust, adapt, and what? Change. Those are things that will happen, must happen in your life. Now we took time to talk about case studies of people God work with to, to bring change and transformation to our world. I mean, um, when we read through the scriptures, they are there. In our daily life today, we see people that God have used to bring positive change to the world around us. And those people didn't wake up one morning all of a sudden claim to where they are. It took a process of time, a process of development, a process of preparing themselves to be able to deliver at the level at which they deliver. And so if we are going to experience the same we are going to experience the same as God's children. It is important that we begin by preparing ourselves. We took time to talk about Joseph as a case study. We also took time to talk about Moses as a case study. And if you look at the life of these two great men that were used of God, they had a period of preparation and then they had a period of manifestation. Every child of God, everyone God is going to work with must have a time of preparation and there must be a time of manifestation. The time of preparation is where you are trained, where you are developed, where you are added onto, where you have your deficiencies and your inefficiency and everything, your weaknesses, and everything that will make you not deliver and fulfill the assignment of the kingdom is worked on. You are propped up, you are built and you are prepared to face the challenge. And so when that has been done, 
then you become prepared for you become a, a a marketable commodity you know a marketable commodity that means you can get on the market now and give you and, and come up good for good value why because when people see you they will see the qualities in you that will make them want to be with you and, and have you within your rank and fall and so uh we talk about moses we talk about joseph we talk about how they were brought up how they were trained how they were developed and then later released and used by god tonight we want to move on to uh david and uh some of the other characters we want to look at uh someone like at uh, uh david david was uh one of israel's king when you look at the book of uh the book of samuel uh, david came to bless him around uh, first samuel around first samuel 16 and then he goes all from, from there all the way up to kings david is in the uh, uh is, is, is in the picture and so in, in in the picture he plays a very serious role to the 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 the, the, the kings you know uh, uh, the, the kings or uh, something and Paul, um, and david was one of those persons that was used mightily of god in fact god calling the man after my heart david was a worshiper david was a man who served the lord with diligence and commitment david was not a perfect man but david was someone who loved the lord who was dedicated to god who was sold out to god who wanted to please god and listen to me as you watch you watch me tonight one of the things that will make you make a lot of impact in your life in your generation and bring the desired change that that will affect your surrounding positively is when you choose to be somebody who would desire to please god don't live your christian life with the issue of trying to get involved in competition or trying to prove things to people or trying to you know more uh uh, gain self glory and rest of the thing you got to avoid it those are all traps that destroy a lot of people today and cause them not to meet the full to fully fulfill what God called them to do I will encourage you to make up your mind to have a fear of God to love God and your first and foremost desire must be to please the Lord the Bible tells us that in Ephesians it say as long as you see it say it's, it's going to find what pleases the Lord you want to know what pleases God what make God happy what make God relax what make God comfortable it's important that you pay attention to those little details and make sure that you give your best to it and so if you look at most of these men who were used by God you will discover that there were some foundational things that surrounded their life when you look at David David Bowen in terms of there are a lot of uh, speculation around David that probably he was a stepchild and the rest of the other thing. Now it's not implied in the Bible. It's true that some statement may allude to that, but it's not implied that he was a stepchild. And so uh, David grows up in this place where there's injustice because you have a boy who is the smallest and he has to be taking care of everything. And the other bigger guys who automatically are much older than him eventually are not there. That's one. Number two. He was called a shepherd boy. A shepherd boy, that means the boy who attends to the shepherd. Now, it's not clear to us to who was the shepherd. Uh, some ministers say by speculation that indeed he was deputy to nobody. That tells you that indeed he was never qualified to be a shepherd. All they do, he was the only person taking care of the sheep. He was always there. He took care of them. He offered care. He offered protection everything else. And they heard about all his story. They never found a fit to make him a shepherd. And so, those could be disadvantages he experienced as a person. But you see, what I like about God is that as we walk with God, those things that people will do against us, and in their mind, they are actually doing it to get at us and get rid of us or to eliminate us. At the end of the day, they actually help to build us up, help us to strengthen us and capacitate us for what God wants to do and accomplish in and through our life. And that's how you hear the Bible say, all things work together for the good of those who love the Lord and those who are called according to what His purpose. Why is the Bible sharing that and telling us say, all things work together for the good? It say that all the bad things that are happening here are good. That's not what the Bible is saying. The Bible is simply let us know that when you are in the plan and purpose of God, everything the enemy tries to do and think that it will be done to destroy or eliminate you and not working out for your good and not working out to see God's plan and purpose fulfilled in your life. And so I want to encourage you and I want to thank you today. I want to give, I want to bless God that indeed you can make yourself available to be one of those instruments in God's hand that God can use to bring change to your personal life, change to your community, your family, and then your nation and the world at large. All right. And so tonight we look at, as we look at David, we see that he, this is the situation where he's born. And then uh, at a young age, he has to be taking care of the sheep. And then uh, he, one day he goes to visit his brothers at uh on the front take food to them but in the process he hears goliath insulting the language of israel but before david had gotten at that time 
in the shepherd field taking care of the sheep david have been preparing himself he have been practicing he's been using the sling very well kill a bear with the sling kill a lion with the sling you know and did a lot of other stuff and they will so they will have been him because the person who even recommended it was a time they were recommended to saw the person who recommended david say a lot of great thing about david he was a mighty man of valor he was a prudent in matters and was very skillful so there were too many things that god knew of the person knew about david i mean david over the years had allowed himself to be nurtured mentor and prepared so the one the challenge we have is that a lot of people are not prepared to be nurtured they are not prepared to be mentored they're not prepared to be watched over guided instructed and told how to do things and what to do a lot of people even in their early and small life they want to be bosses even in their ignorance they want to be bosses even when they don't know anything they don't want to be corrected and such a spirit will take you nowhere if you are ignorant and you don't want to be corrected if you are not knowledgeable and you don't want to learn if you are a person that is not doing well and you are not prepared to you know to build your capacity to be stronger i can tell you that you are a candidate for failure because the things that will make you succeed you must be developed into it you don't wake up one morning and everything changes automatically that's a gambling mentality unfortunately a lot of people are growing in life with such mentality thinking that you wake up one morning everything has turned around life doesn't work that particular way everything that you have to achieve and accomplish in life must be consciously worked out with dedicated decisions sound commitment and faithfulness to whatever you do is over a period success is not an event is a process it comes on a payment plan you get a little today you get a little tomorrow you get a little day after and it keeps going and going and going until you get to the fullest so you don't wake up one morning all of a sudden you are succeeded and everything have turned around that's an illusion that's a false thinking that's 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 not true it doesn't work that way but today a lot of people believe that a lot of people are waiting for one morning that a story will change one morning everything will turn around one morning to become great and that's why people you know uh, 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 I take on a lot of mentality and they join different things. Even when you look at our politics and the rest of other things, you find out that people go into it and their whole mindset is wrong. And that's why different revolutions and different things have come about to bring about a change that will invoke and cause the purpose of God to be fulfilled. I'm not being able to live, I'm not being able to fulfill them if they cannot be fulfilled. Why? Because people do not take time to develop themselves. They don't take the time to, to, to develop, to build their capacity so that when they arrive at where God has prepared for them, they can deliver as expected. I want to encourage us, to, that those of you that are watching tonight, there is somewhere God is taking, you need to prepare yourself for it. Forget about all the other things and prepare yourself for where you are going. Where you are going, there is a performance you are supposed to carry out. There is a responsibility you are supposed to fulfill. If you don't prepare yourself now, when you get that though, you may be in the midst of the opportunity, but you don't know what to do. And that will amount to failure. Though you arrive at the destination, do you have all the opportunity to make a difference, but you'll be able to make a difference. Why? Because you did not prepare yourself for what was ahead. Too many people are not preparing themselves for what is ahead, for what the Lord wants to do, for what the Lord wants to accomplish in and through them. And so they are becoming a disappointment to their generation. They are, they, are, they, are, they are becoming a frustration to the world around them. My prayer is that you will not be one of those. I say you will not be one of those. And so David prepares himself. And so all of us, David, they didn't know that indeed when he gets to the place and meet his brothers, there will going to be a situation that will going to arise that they have needed. You see, I, I usually make this statement that my opportunity to meet preparation it's a good match. I usually say it's a good match, you know. It's a good meeting, you know, because pre pre preparation is there. Then opportunity shows up. So preparation just morphs into opportunity and there's a blast. Unfortunately, a lot of people today, they're waiting for the opportunity before they prepare themselves. Someone want to do business. They are 17. They are not put in place yet. They are not working on getting a bank account. They are not working uh, in knowing what they want to do, what kind of business they want to do. So then get somebody to show up and tell them, say, okay, uh, you say you want to do business. What kind of business you want to do? Then you start you start I need to go think about it. Let me go think about it and come back. You're not ready. You need, if you tend to do business, sit down, find out what kind of business. What kind of business go? What kind of business is successful? What kind of business will bring a fast turnover? What kind of business will bring maybe a slow turnover, but then it will be very effective? And today, do you want a fast turnover or you want a slow turnover? Those are things you want to study. And so when you look at the dimension of investment, some of our investment are long term, some are short term. And so you begin to consider which one you're going to engage, what is the capital you are starting with, uh, and what are the risks involved. You want to know all of that. Because at the end of the day, sometimes some of the things we get involved in have risks attached to it. But then when we don't understand the risk factor, we only think that everything will work well and go the way it's supposed to go. So now frustration sets in when we face challenges and things that we want. He you know whatever we intend to do. So David is prepared, get there, and here they are. This Philistine insulting the children of Israel, and David gets angry. 
And David is motivated that indeed he wants to fight and kill this guy. He wants to bring him down. And everybody telling David, David cannot make it. Little did they didn't know that David had been prepared for this. David may not have everything it took, you know, for him to achieve it. He was depending on God to get the job done. But David has some of the fundamentals that will put him in the place where he can deliver the rest. And so David put in something gear and decided to face this giant which is against his brothers, which against many other people, which he went for the giant. To the glory of God, David brought the giant down, and that was a breakthrough for David. Now that he brought giant, he brought some other giants down, and David was able to, uh, to, 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 to gain prominence. I mean, listen to me, the battles you fight in life, the victories you win will determine where you sit, will determine where you rise. And so you have to be very, 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 very committed in whatever you are doing. You have to give your best to it, knowing, never knowing what the end result will be like. Never knowing where it may take you, but the reality is going to take you somewhere. So when you are doing it, give your best to it, give your all to it, dedicate your entire self to it, because at the end of the day, you want a result that will leave a lasting mark. You don't just want to get involved in something because you want to get involved. You want to do something that at the end of the day, people will be blessed. At the end of the day, lives will be transformed. At the end of the day, changes will be produced and God will be exalted. So I want to encourage you. And David, David was able to do that. David was able to do that. David was able to, how you call it, uh, face Goliath. He got, he got rid of Goliath and he brought the entire situation down. He was able to, uh, you know, to, to, to dismantle things, you know, and, uh, and frustrate everything. David was able to do that. And so when you understand what David did at the end of the day, you know that indeed David rested what? In God. But apart from resting in God, David prepared himself. He did prepare himself. He prepared, he prepared himself. Whatever he was involved with, he prepared himself for it. And I'm saying to you today, there are great things God want to do to you. You got to prepare yourself. You can't sit there and say, oh yes, God going to use me and just sit there. No, you got to prepare yourself. And that's why as we're going through the scripture, we took some time to, to, to give you the scriptures like Hebrew 5, 8 to 14, uh, where Paul is talking about the time of being students and the time of being teachers. Paul said, at this time, we expect you to be teaching. I mean, uh, 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 the, the, the writer is saying, we tell you to be teaching. We don't expect you to be, to be, to be, to be, to be, to be crawling. Uh, we expect you to be an adult. We don't expect you to be a baby. You know? And so these are all the factors. And, and then we got Galatians 5, 16 to 23. That's another scripture. And then we got uh, Ephesians 4, 10 to, uh, to 16. And then we got 1 Peter 2, 1 to 10. All of these scriptures speak to the issue of growth being necessary in the life of the child of God. And so uh, we find that David. Finally, David, go, he goes into the service of Saul. He serves Saul with dedication, with commitment and everything else. And then it's time for him to become king. There's a lot of fight. There's a lot of different wars to make sure he doesn't become king. By the grace of God, God works with him. God protects him. God keeps him for high and danger. And make sure the enemy does not succeed in their attempt to get rid of him. And now I know you let me know that the enemy can pull out their plans together, but they will not succeed in their attempt to get rid of you. I said they will not succeed in their attempt to get rid of you. Their plans, their everything they put together, it may be sophisticated, it may be high, it may be something that people may not even be able to get over. But listen to me, they can never succeed because the hand of God is going to keep and protect and shield you from harm and danger. And finally, David becomes king. He becomes king. And he becomes one of Israel's best kings. All right? Yeah? He may have made some mistake along his king your rule, but David was committed to putting those things back in order. He was able to not operate in pride. He was able to put his pride aside. He was able to humble himself, see God's mercy. And eventually God kept him true and God made sure that he lived to his old age and died very, very fulfilled to the glory of God. So you see David as another, as another person. Another person we are considering here who was used and based on uh, growth and development, you know, was the guy uh, Daniel. Daniel is another person who you, you, you see that in the, uh, uh grew up in the rudiment of the palace of Israel and then 47 captivity as a result of, you know, judgment and other things on the nation. And then uh, that God has spoken to Jeremiah and some of the other prophets. And uh, at the end of the day, uh, he found himself in, 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 how you call it, in uh, uh, Nebuchadnezzar Palace. And Nebuchadnezzar has mercy on them and decides to get them involved with, with leadership in, uh, in, uh, in Shushan. And he asks his, uh, his uh, he asks his, uh, is you know to select them and they are selected from different nations most and for also from hebrew nations and they go into training in the process of training and development daniel gave his best to it daniel also discovered that may have may bend things that may have him will, will hinder him he was able to put spiritual thing into check and put physical thing into check he did not confuse everything he knew what was spiritual he knew what was physical so daniel was able to balance his spiritual life and balance what his physical life and based on the balance that he exercised 
Daniel was able to be able to lead properly. And by that leadership, Daniel transitioned from one level of glory to another level of glory. The Bible says after three and a half years of studies, when they came to appear before the king, they were by far better than all their colleagues. The grace of God had kept them. The glory of God had been released in their life, coupled with their personal studies. So there was a combination of physical preparation and spiritual preparation. And so Daniel comes to the coast of Nebuchadnezzar. He goes on to Belshazzar. Then he went on to, uh, 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 how you call it, the, the Daros, and then on to Cyrus. You know, and so it is, is a, from one transition to another transition. He was able to have a long steady, uh leadership role but the reason why this guy could could, could have this long-standing leadership role is because he had prepared himself all on he had given himself to studies he had given himself to preparation he had given himself to what the uh, development he submitted and allowed himself to be developed for a period and so when daniel took the stage for of leadership in in in, 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 in babylon in, in shushan you notice that indeed he went from one kingdom to another kingdom to the point that there was a leadership that came to power and is out of ostracized you know uh, daniel group and the rest of the thing and then when and then all of a sudden they started having some serious problem and as they kept having a problem they uh they, they, they the, the mother said that the, the, the mother of the king said hey listen to me uh i know you came to power and you all wanted to do so and so thing but listen to me. there was this guy here who were here when your father was in power there was no problem in many this all He's available, and that's how they want to get Daniel. Daniel came, and Daniel was able to solve the major problem that just come up in the kingdom that they could not even find. It was a spiritual issue. God was speaking to the nation. He was telling them they are going to error. They are missing serious blunder spiritually, and God was about to bring a serious visitation. And God wrote it on the wall. It was a judgment written on the wall. What I like Daniel for is that he was bored. When he saw he didn't play around, he told the king, "Day tonight, your throne is taken." God said, "I, your throne have ended tonight." And if I was that night, he was removed. Why? Because God has spoken. He had touched something you are not supposed to touch and provoked something in the heavens that led to divine judgment. And how many people don't understand that divine judgment is possible. There are times when you can touch things on the earth and it can provoke something in heaven. Not because you touch something in heaven, you touch something on the earth. But the thing that you touch on the earth is related to something in the heavens. And you could cause a shock in the atmosphere that could have a backfire to you as a person. And that's why spirituality and also being physical are too, they are too, they are important. But they have to work together. Today we have people who act like they don't, they are not spiritual. And you actually they are very spiritual. That means they are demonically spiritual. They will consult all the different voodoos and everything everywhere. And then when it comes to the things of God, they act like they say, you know, you know, uh, spiritual thing is for fun. And when you check them in reality, they are deeply spiritual but negatively spiritual. And that will make them to be crazy because the, the thing that because they are demonically manifesting and they have the backing of all these different wizards and things, the thing and because those all who come from the, the God standpoint, we operate in humility, we are a bit careful, we, we try not to you know carry ourselves extra or the rest of other things. So there's a tendency to want to misbehave. But I can tell you, and I keep signing that warning. Many of you that crossing your line, you better put your saying in order. There's history. Go and study. There's history. There's history in the world. There is history in this nation. There's history in the church. There's history. Go and do your studies. There's history. People who don't study history, who don't learn from it, become history. That means we have to use, we have to read you. That means you we have to read you to teach other people lesson. And I'm saying it to you, you are listening to me tonight. If you are there and madness is entering your head that you don't even know where to carry, you need to stop. You need to stop. You need to stop. The God that sits in heaven, it's not a joke. By the grace of God, I'm serving for more than 30 years now. More than 30 unbroken years. I've seen him. I've seen his acts. He's fearful. I've seen God raise people and he raised people. I've seen it. I've seen it. I've seen it in my lifetime. I've seen it in this nation. I've seen God raise and he raised. The same God that can raise and he raise. You have to be careful. When God gives you opportunity, you need to check yourself. So those of you who are certain you are deceiving yourself, you have people deceiving you and you are misbehaving, you need to stop it. Because you are not walking right, you are on the wrong road. Put yourself in time so you don't end up becoming history. You don't become a lesson for people to learn from. God has a way of doing that. He has done it through the ages. It's not the, Solomon said, there's nothing new under the sun. 
Nothing new under the sun. So my advice to you is that learn, develop, build yourself. People can make mistakes in life. People can come to play in life because they are ignorant and because they don't know something that makes any mistake. But to persistently desire to walk in ignorance is not a healthy thing. It's a dangerous place to be. And especially when you start tempering with spiritual things, that things that you got no business crossing to, you start going there, you're looking for trouble. Put yourself in order and learn your lessons. I've seen people who were on their way up in this country that just touched the wrong thing and they went off. They went off. Up to today, they are not coming back on. They went off. You know, they, they are off. Off like off. Whoever. <laughs> I've seen it. I watched it. I watched it. So please, I'm begging you, all of you. The Bible says God is not slow. Because someone you say, oh, God is not God is slow. He said, God is not slow. As some people think. He said, but he is not willing that any should perish. He wants all to come to repentance. Even when you are making mistakes, he wants you to come to yourself, to correct yourself, and put yourself back on course. Is that period you can think that God is weak, or God is slow, God is not slow, God is timely. God does everything at the appointed time. He doesn't do anything before the time. He doesn't do anything after the time. He works in the fullness of time. That's why our views and our thoughts doesn't shake him. You know. So when you hear it, you about, it doesn't go, oh, the guy do something. You think God is so irresponsible that some joker will be standing somewhere and making fun of me and he, he will decide to respond to you. God is too intelligent. God is too sound. There's a thing he doesn't pay attention. You know exactly what to pay and what not to pay attention to. But when he gets ready to handle issues, he handles it well. Even you, that know him, when you see Henry, you feel bad. You almost want to think you are better than him. But that will make God God. I'm saying to you tonight, grow up, learn, so that you don't become a victim of circumstances. You don't become a casualty of life. Because too many people have become a casualty of life because they don't know how to carry themselves. So Daniel, prepare himself. And Daniel was used mightily. Today, Daniel is remembered in the Bible as a major prophet. When it comes to the issue of um, spirituality, he's there. When it comes to the issue of governance, administration, and everything, political leadership, Daniel is, a, is, a, is, is, is an example. You can use him as a case study, as an example of a man that brought change, that brought hope, that brought help to his people, that brought help to other people. Who uh, The Bible says he had an excellent spirit. Well, how did he get an excellent spirit? He took time to develop it. It was a process. It was not an event. It was not that he was lucky. He took time to develop himself. He gave his time to personal development. Submitted to God. Allow God to teach him. Allow God to train him. Allow God to transform him. Allow God to rearrange his thought pattern and everything else. He allowed God to do it. He didn't allow God to do it. So I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you tonight. Allow God to develop you. Allow God to develop you. Amen. Another person is our master Jesus. Jesus came to this earth as a baby in the manger. But Jesus went through the rudiments of training. He took our time of physical training, living in his parents' house, learned responsibility, was a carpenter. Why they, they, they call him the carpenter? I mean, I mean, carpenter, you are. But the carpenter said, yeah, no, they're men of God now. And then that's the world we live in because they are taught this. They, they have us, they, they got a crazy way of thinking. You know, they think 20 children play together for 20 years, you know. And uh, when you receive the call of God, they overlook the call of God. They think that, you know, being a servant of God is fun. They think it's a joke. Yeah. But I want to make an announcement, especially to our country right now. The anointing of our country is, is rising. It's going to another level. And many of you who have been used to making fun of servants of God and misbehaving, you better start putting your saying order there. I'm just telling you the truth. Me, I like to say another thing in Clecon. The anointing level is rising. The time is coming that most of you that do foolishness to serve on God, you will not get away. You will not get away. It's, you, you, you try it, you, you feel pain. I tell you something, you, you feel silver pain. And that's the, the era we are moving towards. That's the era we are transiting into. I'm advising you, put yourself in order. Maybe you've been doing it and getting away. The season we're going to, it's not a healthy thing to keep walking that way. Put yourself in order. That's my advice to you. My advice. Those of you who have become judged for God, that you can go fight for God. Again, God said, you better stop 
Stop it. But yeah. So Jesus walked this earth. He grew to rank and fall. He had physical training. Then he got to a place he did spiritual training. Built himself. Before he ever even started his ministry, he went on a 40 days and 40 nights of special preparation. Being with the Father, getting instruction, downloading information for heaven, knowing what heaven wanted. Making sure that he was intact so that by the time he stepped, whatever you'll be doing will be with accuracy, will be with commitment, will be with dedication. And he did it. And his impact, after three and a half years of ministry, went to the cross, died, rose from the dead. Today he's seated in heaven at the right hand of the Father, making intercession for us, making sure the church progresses, the church moves to the place it's supposed to be and make the kind of impact it's supposed to make. But he laid the foundation work for it. How did he do it? He came and went through the root of man. He came here and taught a pattern. The Bible, that way, the Bible says he left us an example for us to follow. My prayer is that we will follow that example and bring the change that we desire in our time. Hallelujah. Another person we see again, we will use mighty of God who went through the root of man and training was Paul. Saul, who turned Paul, all right? Saul Tarsus, this guy who was working hard against the church, against the people of God. You know, it's never new. There have always been people who have availed themselves to the devil to be used to work against God's house. They've always, they always been there. In every generation, there have been people ever. I just pray that it won't be you. It won't be you. That indeed, you who have availed themselves to the devil. But in every generation, there are people who have availed themselves to the devil. They become agents of darkness. They can become liaisons of the kingdom of darkness. To, to work against the purposes of God. Then they use situations. And those situations, in the midst of those situations, they bring in their own agenda. They bring in their evil plan, their evil scheme they have in their mind. And put it into a situation and used it at that time. They don't just come out like that. They try to find something that they can use as a pattern. You know, to be able to get what is in their mind. You know, their prejudice, different things they've developed over the period. They believe that's the best time to be able to inject certain things that they wanted to inject. And so, we've seen it happen. So, so, so God had to touch him and visit him. God had to struck him. And God intended to use him for his glory. Thank God he was used by God. God chose to use him for his glory. But God had to hit him hard. God had to interrupt him and bring him to his knee and say, Hey, the very thing you're fighting, you will suffer for it. Say that you, say, you understand why I mean, what you put on going through. And that's why his ministry was a tough ministry. But thank God that in the process, before he ever took up, he went to himself, prepared himself. He went to the Arabian Desert. He spent 14 years in the Arabian Desert, developing himself, building his capacity, preparing for ministry. After that, he returned to Jerusalem and then went on to Antioch. And from Antioch, he was launched and took on to his missionary journey. And today, he is known for writing more than two thirds of the New Testament. He is known for planting the church in the new world. Then he was a major missionary, an architect of revival across the world. How did this man do so? This man had to go through a process of growth and development. When the man met God, there were other people who had to play roles. He was like the first person that God gave him was Ananias. After Ananias, uh, he went silent for a while. And that's we see, we see Barnabas working along with him. So you found that different people work with Paul along the period of his life, in his development, in his growth level. If you're going to grow, you will have you, God will have to have people planted in your life. There will be people you have to submit to. There will be people you have to open your spirit to. Today, we have people who say they want to be part of certain things. They want to be in ministry. They want to be used by God. They don't want to be mentored. You come to church, then you say you want to become, you want to become, you know, you say I want to go. And then nobody mentor you. Who train you? Who develop you in ministry? Who, who is a term of reference? Who is a term of reference? Who, who nurture you? Who taught you the rudiments? You didn't mean to say, I don't take power and preach. You mean to go far beyond that. There are deeper things about ministry. There are things you don't understand about ministry. Because in ministry, you are leading people. People's lives are important. They are entrusted into your care. People's destiny are entrusted into your care. Unfortunately, they put in a, to be a servant of God and to take Bible and preach. You didn't have to take Bible and preach. No one wants to put everybody want to take Bible and preach and take because you think that that's what makes you a servant of God. I'll tell you that being a servant of God is more than that. It's more than that. That's minute. That's just one of the minute things of preaching the word of God. There are other components. You are God don't download you with wisdom because you are dealing with people in their lives and issue you need counsel. God gives you grace to be able to counsel, to mentor. And you, the grace you carry has the capacity to build and develop people. So you're not just any kind of person. You can even understand what you carry. There are ministers who know what they carry. They don't make noise. They don't go and jump around the place and look for something. They know they are 
confident in their self. They are not proud, but they are confident and said they know that God has called them on an assignment. They respect their assignment and they gave themselves to it. They're not depending on somebody. They know that no one is their soul. They know that God is their soul. They depend on God. They trust in Him and they look to Him to guide them other things. And God does it because God is very responsible. Very, very responsible. The responsible God. Yeah. So Paul was used by God. I pray tonight you will be used by God. I'm on top of you, you may not be a preacher. You may never become a preacher. I'm not saying you may not preach this gospel. You may never be a preacher. But you're going to be a great Christian. You're going to be somebody that God will use, God will work with. Whether it's through your career, whether it's through what you study, whether it's through some special ambition in life. But I know that God is going to use you to do something. And that's why developing yourself and preparing yourself for what God is about to do is very, very much important. you got to be able to give your best to it. And that's why God is allowing some of us to take out this time right now and begin to teach you these things so that you understand it and know that it doesn't happen overnight. And know that indeed there are things you need to pay attention to, details you need to pay attention to and develop yourself. You know, look at those weaknesses in you, those things are the matter. Don't cover them. You got weaknesses, you got things that are challenging you, don't cover it. Pay attention to it. Find out how you can work on it. Because those are the things when God begins to elevate you, the enemy wants to use to bring you down. You know what? Describe how to fight to to make you act stupid and, and, and sorry, but uh, uh, make sure that indeed you ignore your weaknesses, you ignore those things that 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 that, that, uh, you, that make you vulnerable. Instead of strengthening and building your capacity, there he makes you to overlook it. He doesn't even want you to pay attention to it. I want to say to you tonight: pay attention to those weaknesses in you, those those inadequacies, those things, adequacies, the different things in you that indeed that you know that make you vulnerable. Pay attention to it and build your capacity. Because as you grow and go higher, the enemy don't go for your strength, he goes for your weakness. And it's those things you will want to use to dismantle you and crush you. But he's not going to succeed in doing it. Because the God that you serve is going to show himself faithful on your behalf. I say the God that you serve is going to show himself faithful on your behalf. I say the God that you serve is going to show himself faithful on your behalf. So I want to encourage you, I want to let you know that this God is faithful. This God is committed to bring in a change you desire. And so... Give your best to him. Growth is necessary. These people were used by God. And so now when we hear about their name, we try to think that they were supermen. They just jump out. They were developed. They went through the process of life. And they gave themselves to be prepared for wherever they was going. So at the end of the day, they could make the impact they wanted to make. And my prayer for you is that you will make that impact. You will bring that change. You will produce that result to the glory of God. To the glory of God. God will be glorified in your life. God will be exalted in your life. God's name will be praised in your life. And at the end of the day, the purposes and plan of God for your life will be fulfilled. I will bless God and stop here tonight. Yeah, I'd like to stop here tonight. I think this is where we're closing tonight. Uh, the next time I'm going to be appearing before you when we introduce another new topic. Uh, and um, I hope you are learning so that you can be able to use it to the glory of God and build your own capacity and be able to strengthen yourself and others around you. Yeah. So I want to encourage you tonight. I want to let you know that God has a plan for you, has a purpose for you. And don't disappoint God. Make sure you are able to fulfill whatever God called you to do. You are able to bring the change you look forward to. And at the end of the day, His purpose, will, and plan for your life to be accomplished. Yeah, it's been good talking to you and ministering to you over the past days. Yeah, and I will pray that whatever the Lord has started, He's going to finish it. Uh, I'd like to pray for you tonight. Maybe uh, you are there in a... Uh, uh, you, you, whatever you are talking about is you that you're going through that you need some strength you need some counsel in that area i pray that the lord will help you and the lord will strengthen you that you won't disappoint god that whatever the lord has called you to do you will finish it and uh you'll be like paul say i fought a good fight i've run the race i finished my course you know so that that will happen you know at the end of the day and then god will be glorified and his purposes and plan will be fulfilled i want to thank god for all of you that going to partner, that going to be something who like to going to share these videos and uh, reach out to others who will be part of this time of learning. So our early morning due, please take advantage of it. And uh, our broadcast is continuing. Every morning we broadcast uh, through the morning and we try to intend to get better and better to be a blessing to you. The reason why we are here is because of you. We ask you to take advantage of it. Use it to the glory of God. Let's pray this evening. Father, I want to thank you in a special way. I bless you tonight so much for your servants. I leave them to you wherever they are watching from. I cover them in your grace and your protection. I cover them in your blood. I ask you to take charge of them and direct and lead them. I pray, O oh God, that whatever you are starting, you finish it. Your word declares you are the author and the finisher.
tonight, I come against every setup, I come against every projection, I come against every manipulation, everything that is not of God, I overturn and I scatter by the blood of Jesus. I notify in the name of I pray today that their counsel will not stand, their work will not succeed in the name of Jesus Christ. Your word declares that you disappoint the devices of the crafted that they will not perform their enterprise. Thank you for disappointing. Thank you for overturning the works of the enemy. I pray tonight, praying for your people, praying for grace, praying for strength, praying for empowerment, that your people will fulfill their assignment, that your people will not disappoint you, that they will bring the necessary change and they will bring hope and healing to this generation. Thank you for being a good God, for being a faithful God, for being a mighty God. We bless and exalt your name. We honor and adore you this night. We pray for healing. We pray for deliverance. We pray for restoration. We ask you to touch your people in the name of Jesus Christ. And we bless you. Take the glory. Take the praise. And let any be exalted. In Jesus' mighty name. Amen. And amen. It's always good when we have you here to minister to you. Thank you for being with us tonight. And we pray again we'll have a great time tomorrow night. Uh, I want to bless God for all of you. Uh, beginning tomorrow, if I will start it today, we will be showing our documentary Israel, the Israel Experience. We worked on the uh, the picture video. And we'll be doing the video video later. So uh, we would like to put that up first. So tomorrow morning you'll be up to watch. We actually encourage you to be a part of it. It's just a time of having a whole other experience. And, and I look forward that one of these days you can be there too and have that experience. Yeah. So we we'll trust that indeed you you will be available to go through it. I want to bless God for everybody. Thank you for your partner. Those who's going to partner with us to make this a broadcast a success that we can be able to broadcast like this. We are grateful to God for you and we reverend and blessed you. Uh, I also want to inform you soon. Very soon we'll be introducing other you know other uh, programs that will be you know uh, you know live. You know, teaching and all this stuff. Yeah. If I very soon we'll be relaying the the uh, global you know debate. You know, the offer by you for change. We want to see how we can relay it and be a part of the process. So we we'll encourage you. Let's start praying about it. Apart from our evangelistic work, we also want to be a positive change agent in our community. So we trust that indeed you can make yourself available. God bless you tonight. Uh, we thank you for being with us and being there. And uh, we we'll look forward to having a great time. Uh, beginning tomorrow, we'll do everything that uh, doing our administration or beginning to yeah to do our administration. We we'll have uh, the information has to do with our getting into our role, scroll enrolling under the screen. We we'll want to see how we can work on that and have it done, and we we'll trust that we can work it out. That's how it. God bless you, and we pray you have a great night. You know, have a great night. Uh, we know that in the uh, the Lord is going to be to be with you. God is going to sustain you. God is going to bless you in a mighty way. Yeah. Yeah, we want to encourage you. Give your peace. Yeah, we give you glory. You deserve the glory. You've been so good to us as you lift your holy name. You deserve the glory. And the honor. Yeah, we lift our hands in worship. Our hands in worship. As you lift your holy name. You deserve the glory. So I need to tell him tonight. Any honor. Oh Lord, we live our hands in worship. Lord, we lift our hands in worship. Yeah. As praise the
miracle so great and there is no one else like you